I was going to read in a couple of old ghost stories, but then I got stuck on this long one and decided to do an episode only around this story. Because it is a mighty story, and it is a story that lives on in the area where it's from. The area is Gotland, the big island out in the Baltic Sea. Gotland have had people living there since the Stone Age, and it has been a center for trade both during Viking Age and medieval times, and it has a very rich and old history. Before we get into the story about Tok Steinan, I thought I would give you a very short background to why the story is built the way it is, and what the reason is for its existence. If you just want to hear the story, you find this timestamp in the description below. Ghost and the undead is something you find in all folklore all around the world. The idea of dead people that comes back is something that seems to be as old as humanity itself. And the reasons are many. It could be that they have something that they never finished in life. They are searching for something that they have lost or that was taken from them. They have a hidden treasure that they are guarding or that they was murdered and want revenge. In early Scandinavia, during late Iron Age, it seemed that they had several ghostly and undead beings. And if we really could call them ghosts, are a bit depending on what you put in the name ghost. If you look at Old Norse texts, they are more like zombies than ghosts. The idea of a soul that separates from the body doesn't seem to be a thing in the Old Norse stories around people that can't find peace in death. In the older text, the whole body is rising from the grave, and the heroes in the stories need to kill them a second time, usually by burning the corpse. There is a term that is used in Sweden that calls them leeksböken, which means cadaver ghosts. This idea about corporeal ghosts seem to have lived on long up here in the Swedish memory. And here is where the story from Gotland gets relevant, the story about Tarksteinam. How old it is, it's not something we actually know. It is mentioned as old in most texts and is documented the first time in writing 15th of July 1704, signed by J. Molanus. It was a text kept at the Tarkstens farm up to 800, when it was shown for an academic scholar that was doing research of the Old Norse history. It is said that it was runes written on parchment. But if that really was so, it's unclear since the text does no longer exist. The story seemed to be based of a grave tomb after Nikolaus Tarkstein, or Niklas Tarkstein, as probably his name sounded in the Gotlandic dialect. Niklas was a very wealthy farmer that was a very real person that did live during the 13th century on the northern part of Gotland. The farm is still there too, Tarkstens farm, or Stora Tarkstens. The farm has very old buildings. The central farmhouse is rebuilt during the 18th century, but still have parts of the old medieval house in it. And that's probably where the brothers Niklas and Mikael Tarksten lived. But it isn't the house that has caused the stories though. It is the tomb in the nearby church in the little town called Lärbro. There is a tombstone there with the name Nikolaus Tarkstein and the date for his death is 7th of March 1274. There is also another inscription on the gravestone, written in Latin. It is a verse written with rhymes. Quilegis hic ora, vita sito parterit hora, crimina deplora, mors venit asque mora. That means something along with you that read this, pray, hastily the hours of life goes by. Weep for the crimes, or possibly weep for the sins. Death comes without delay. And that was earlier misunderstood and believed to be directed towards Nils Tarksten in the grave. That of course tickled the local people's minds. What crimes and sin can this person have done to result in such an inscription? A later translation says that this saying is directed to the reader of the stone. We should all weep for our crimes and sins because we are all sinners. And that doesn't mean at all that the person buried there was a sinful person. 
Before we listen to the actual story, just a short reminder that sharing is caring. So if you like my content, please share it on social media. It helps the channel a lot. And don't forget to like and, of course, subscribe. Now let's hear the story. The story that seems to have lived on so strong in the Gotlandic mines that there are still reports of sightings of this ghost. More of that and some chilling facts around the story will come after the actual story. This is the story of Tak Steinan, told by Jakob Levin, born 1824, written down somewhere in the late 19th century by P. R. Sava, born 1811. In the old days there was a man at Takstens in Lärbro parish at Gotland, a mighty chieftain that was one that had a lot to say about things and that nobody dared to go against. When the priest in the parish was about to hold the Sunday service, the ringer had to always ask if Takstainan had arrived to the church, but the people usually had to wait for him. Once it happened that Takstainan delayed his arrival long into the evening, and thus the people started to protest against the priest that he should do his job. But the priest didn't dare to go against the will of Takstainan, not even when he wasn't present. When the priest finally decided to go up in the pulpit, Tak Steinan arrived to the church and heard that the priest was preaching. He then went into the clergy house to wait for the priest to come therein. When the priest did, Tak Steinan met him with angry words and curses because the priest had done this insult towards him and broken his contract. While they were exchanging words, the priest's servants came in and with strokes and blows so that the blood was all over the walls and roof of the Tokstainan, blood that would never go away, they finally took Tokstainan's life. After that, the rumors started to spread that the big hero was struck down. A lot of strangers and rich people came to see the blood to decide if it was really true. And this cost the priest a lot of money because he had to put up a panel wood so that the blood would not be seen because you could not wash it away. Well now, Takstainan would be buried in Roma cloister with big honor and he was driven upon a wagon by the priest's largest servant. The funeral procession rode through Källunge but the corpse wagon had to be driven by the servant another way and they ordered him to drive very carefully and slow. But the servant drove in haste, because he feared to come late. Then Tak Steinan sat up in the coffin and said, Didn't you hear the order you got to drive slow? Why do you shake me so badly? The servant got so scared he jumped out of the wagon and met the others at the Ekeby church, telling all about what had happened. And then they had to go back after the body to get it to the cloister for the burial. But Tak Steinan, he ran home that night back to Tokstens farm and was no longer at the cloister. And he caused a lot of trouble so that the people at the farm had no peace and quiet any longer, not day nor night. No one knew either what to do with him. There was a maid from Estonia in the farm and she was bold enough to make a huge fire in the oven and then put oak wood around it. After a while, Tak Steinan came inside, and then the maid took out a chair and asked him to sit down and warm up. He really did sit down, and he put up his feet against the stove top. You can still today see the holes after his heels. Shortly after that, the maid took a piece of oak wood, put it on fire, and hit Tak Steinan with it and asked, What do you run after? Tak Steinan had no power against the oak wood, but when the maid had no more and no longer could defend herself, he rose up after her, and she pretended to run for the door, but really she hid on top of the fireplace. Tak Steinan ran out through the door, but couldn't find her, so he took the road down towards Takstens meadow, that is also called Takstens bog. There he settled down for a while, and no one can therefore travel neither back nor forth, regardless of if they was going to fetch hay or do something else. So they had no use for that meadow and the lands around it any more. No one was so powerful that they could dampen his violence, because anyone that would be willing to could not, because they wasn't clean from sin either. All of them he loathed together with their families, so no one was there to stand up towards him. 
Finally, there was a young man from Öland and he had been at a troll mountain and there seen a maiden that he took for his wife. And he gave her three things to choose from as a dowry. One, a coffin with coins. Two, to become queen of the mountain. Or three, a rune staff. Out of these things, she chose the third. These two breeded a son that became a great sorcerer and later he got written and asked to come and see if he could handle Tarkstainan. The same walked over through the sea in a glass and was never in great danger except when he ran into a huge fish, which he had to lay inside for three days. But after he finally managed to get out of the fish, he came to Gotland. When he came here, he was taken down to the meadow to Tarkstainan, but he couldn't see him. He figured out, though, that he had to sit backwards on a mare and drink out of the mare's behind with a silver spoon. When Tark Steinan saw this, he could no longer hinder himself from commenting on the ridiculous scene, and said, Crazy have I seen and crazy I have heard, but never crazier than the man you are. And in the same moment, the sorcerer threw the rune stave in front of Tark Steinan and said, Kick him away from you. Tark Steinan tried, but his leg got stuck. Then the sorcerer said, Step away from him with your other foot. He did that, but got stuck with that one too. Now the sorcerer said, Take it away with your hands and you don't have to be stuck. Tark Steinan took the stave with his hand, but got stuck with that too. And the sorcerer said, Get him loose with your other hand and you will be free. Tark Steinan tried that too, but the hand also got stuck. Finally the sorcerer said, Bite it away with your teeth then. And when Tark Steinan did that, his mouth also got stuck. Now Tark Steinan laid there like a hedgehog, all rolled up, and could not move neither hand nor foot. Then the sorcerer commanded him to Larbro Church, where he was put down through the northern gate into a grave, and the door was walled up, where you can still see it today. The sorcerer threw lead on him and say, Lay there until this rot, Tark Steinan answered. That I can live through. Then the sorcerer took a bear skin and threw upon him and say, Lay here one year for each hair. Tark Steinan answered, As long as that I will surely live, and it has an end. Finally the sorcerer took and threw upon him car coil made out of linden wood and said, Lay until it rots. Then Tark Steinan answered, That will never happen. And thereafter Tark Steinan went silent. And after that, nobody had been bothered by him. Except that, just a little while ago, there is supposed to have been a grave digger that was going to dig a grave for a corpse, and he came too close to Tark Steinan's grave. Then Tark Steinan shouted, NOT CLOSER! And there ends the story told by Jakob Levin. There are many versions of this myth, and unlike this story where the priest seemed to actually survive his fight with Tark Steinan, he is more often killed. In some versions, even at the altar, because Tark Steinan gets so angry that the priest dared to start the ceremonial without him. In some versions, the sorcerer is also named as Kettil Ruenske, a character that shows up in a collection of myth about this great sorcerer under the name The Tales of Kettil Ruenske and also in other folklore tales around Sweden. There you can find that the motif about how the sorcerer managed to defeat Tark Steinan is possibly borrowed from another tale where Kettle defeat a character named Gilbert in more or less the same manner. But how much truth is it to this old ghost story? Well, I don't know how much truth there is behind it, but there are people that claim that they have excavated the grave of Nicholas Tarksten and indeed found a grave where a big man is buried on a bearskin. It was common through uh, the Iron Age to actually bury people, usually men upon bearskins, both at Gotland in some other parts of Sweden. So maybe that survived into the 13th century and this rich man was honored to be buried that way. Or maybe that excavation disturbed the peace for the old grumpy ghost. And that's why people nowadays have experienced a lot of strange things in the house of Tarkstein's farm. It is said that you can still meet him on the road up to the farm. Out of nowhere a man in old raggedy clothes will show up and stare at you with eyes glowing of evil. And then just as quick disappears again. 
It is said that in the old medieval parts of the building on the farm, you can hear footsteps, the doors will open and close, and sometimes you can see a candle burning behind the window, although nobody is supposed to be in the building. If the story is true about the bear skin and the car coil, it would be around now that all of it has disappeared into the soil. So maybe that is why the ghost sightings are becoming more and more frequent. What do you think? <laughs>